let's take a look at the Abacus modeling example. Fast punch. We will start with a 2D discrete rigid. Um, spline like this. So it will be a small example, like literally small example this time. So these are the points we will use. We will define five points of this spline <coughs> given down here. And we will ram this punch into a block of width 0.4 and height 0.2. Uh, we will use a reference point at the, <coughs> sorry, at the upper left. Uh, I shouldn't drink as much. Um, and if necessary, we define a point inertia for this reference point. Because it's a it will be a dynamic explicit analysis, you have to define if you don't assign a, a density and thus a mass to a body, you usually have to define a point mass to out of, of whatever, it doesn't matter because you prescribe the velocity. Um, you have to define a point mass, but if I remember correctly, for some reason from 2017 on, it automatically does this. Um, it sets a um, default value of one to the point mass, I think if you use 2017 or higher, then you don't have to do this. But yeah, let me know. Uh, global seeds, so we mesh on part. My, I hope you remember my favorite element. Um, then we will create the block as a deformable uh, solid and then we will actually partition it. We will use the partition option to um, vertically partition it. I think we didn't talk about partition, partitions so much before. It's used to assign two different things to the same body. So it's still one body, one mesh, one Lagrangian body interacting with itself. However, for example, you can assign ALE to the right and non-ALE to the left. Or aluminum left and metal sorry, aluminum left and steel right. Um, so this is a nice way where you can use partitioning to do two things at the same time or to check two things at the same, so to say. Um, CPSR for CPS4R, so we'll check for a continuum plane stress and that's also the reason why we define a solid homogeneous. So it's not a shell, I know, it's a 2D, but remember when we talked about continuum elements, it's a solid continuum body that is depicted by a 2D representation under certain assumptions. <clears throat> so for the material, we'll use steel, and this time I've given here the unit system that I'm working in, so I hope you remember. Now we have to, uh, we take kg, um, meter and thus um, meter cubic in the case of density, Pascal, since we define Pascal, uh, it's 210 to the power of 9, um, like a simple elastic approach here. Um, assigning the section, default thickness here is 1 millimeter and then I think we did it the last time that we used the translate to option to actually place uh, the punch very close to our block. Uh, and then when we create the step, not as before, we won't use static general here, but here is where the fun begins. We'll use dynamic explicit analysis. And yes, as I said before, we can write from the beginning or we can do this later, define ALE and for example, do a small variation if we check or uncheck the radio button preserve initial mesh grading. Uh, that might be interesting to see what this actually doing. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll fix the block. And optionally, what you can do as a variation, maybe take a look at if you also fix the sides, 
you can imagine that if you if your punch goes in like this that the material has to go up right mm -hmm. okay like this and then if you do this maybe switch to uh, CPE 4R so if you do this variation if you do this test with the fixed sides then alter between plane strain and plane stress and see how this has an effect on the bulging of your material. I think this is nice to see, you should really do this. Um, here are some more options I want to give you that you should really um, take a look into. I think there, there are some nice yeah, insights you gain into how a lot of these things work if you do the following variation. So for example, instead of using um, frictionless, I didn't talk about contact, but yeah, we'll start with frictionless standard contact. Um, you can use penalty uh, point 0.2, so the Coulomb friction coefficient. And um, on the other hand, variation two could be that you bias the top side of your non-ALE part, whether it was the right or left, to see if it um, actually helps to better depict the, the contact if you do not account for ALE in this area. Um, then deviation factor of the punch, so the, because it's a discrete rigid, so that uh, maybe you get a coarser master mesh and see if then the effect of ALE is even higher or less pronounced and so on. And one more thing is you could activate semi-automatic mass scaling and the easiest is to do the, the density scaling. I'll think I'll show you this quickly when we set up um, the model. Uh, is to just define the factor right away. So right from the start, you'll define a, a factor and then you should check your total time increment. Your delta T is given in the results monitor. And probably if you compare these two, um, then you should see it should be one fourth of your original length. So what we will do, um, we look at the um, difference between ALE and non-ALE and what you could further do is maybe do this simulation uh, in also static impl implicit. I don't know, I didn't check, but I think if you get the contact right, the Im implicit code should run faster, but maybe compare how well your mesh handles um, distortion, if you punch really deeply, if you compare explicit dynamic ALE versus mesh distortion activated implicit static. Could be interesting to see which run, which run faster and what the results look like. Yeah, what's the effect of mass, densi uh, mass density scaling or just mass scaling? Uh, what if, if you go up to a thousand? Yeah, your simulation should be done in a couple of minutes, but how does your results look? Um, we'll compare the two sides, ALE versus non-ALE, and look at especially how the, the mesh behaves around this um, contact. Okay, uh, see you on the other side.